Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Hey everyone, BOMB Flyer here. I'm going to show you how to use contrast paint to do a camouflage pattern. We're going to use GW's Agaros Dunes as the contrast paint base. As you can see here, I've already primed and base coated my miniature. I used a white enamel spray primer and then I used Vallejo Bone White to coat over that with my airbrush. You can also use a brush. Uh, any ivory or beige light colored cream color will work just fine for this. It really helps bring out the browns of the contrast paint once we start applying it. Grab your Agaros Dunes contrast color. Shake it up really well. Shake it up every time you use it. Grab yourself a brush and a paper towel and let's get started. I've got an old brush that I'm going to use for base coating. It's just a synthetic large round brush and start applying from the top down. If you've seen any of my other contrast paint tutorials, you'll be familiar with starting at the top and letting gravity kind of take the overall excess paint and bring it down to the bottom of the miniature as you're working. But you do also want to avoid pooling as you go. Don't try to spread it too thin. You want some buildup on the panels. What that does is allows for the variation on the panel color but you do need to work the paint into individual recesses as it won't just capillary action take it into all the little cracks and crevices. You will need to look and make sure there aren't spots that you missed, but overall contrast paint is meant to be very beginner and user friendly. So just be wary that if you let it pool up too much, it will be a bit gummy and, and dark. So when you see it like on the shoulder pad here, build up, go ahead and work that off of the panel, but try not to take it all off. You want a little bit of that surface tension to hold just a little bit more paint because at the end of it drying, that's what's gonna give you a nice highlighted panel effect. Continue to work. Make sure that you double check, look on the undersides of areas to see if there's spots that you may have missed. Use your brush and paper towel to wick away those pooled areas and then let it dry completely for at least an hour. Now that the contrast paint is dry, you can see the overall effect of the highlighted panels that it has achieved. If it's a little too dark for you, you could try their thinner medium as well to put a little bit thinner coat on, but because we're going to dry brush it on a later step, I wanted to go darker and really get those shadows established because it will lighten up at the end. Now we're gonna use Militarum Green contrast paint, and this will be what will provide the stripes or camouflage pattern. I've got a number one synthetic brush. Make sure you shake up that paint real well. And decide on the pattern of camouflage you want to do, be it blobs or stripes or something along that line. And now, instead of trying to apply this contrast paint like you were actually trying to coat the miniature, you're going to paint with it. So you don't need to load the brush up nearly as much. And now, just define your stripe patterns here. I'm going to use tiger stripes. And treat it like you would any other thinned paint. It will run if you get too much built up, so be cognizant of that. But if you take your time and apply it like you'd be painting with a regular acrylic paint, it should behave pretty well. Take your time establishing these lines. If you want to create a sharper defined air edge, then I like to take the tip of my brush and establish away from where I want the point to be. So if I want this edge here to be sharp, I'll work from there and start back towards the area that I want to be thicker versus trying to stroke the brush into a spot and have it finish as a sharp point. Don't worry if it doesn't coat completely in the first pass. You're going to need to do two coats at least. You can see now as I've got most of the pattern completed, I'm just going through as I apply the stripes and making sure that I get a nice consistent and continuous pattern. If you get some breaks here and there, that's not a big deal. Again, we're going to do a second coat but it's good to get it as much completed on the first pass just to have a good base foundation. Once you're happy with the overall pattern that you've got, let it dry for probably 20 or 30 minutes at least. Again, it's gonna dry faster than the normal contrast paint would, but once you're comfortable and ready to go, we'll start the next layer. Now the first layer of stripes are complete, inspect your miniature and see if there's any spots that you missed. Certainly you're gonna to wanna to touch those up, but as far as doing a second coat, this is completely up to you. If you're happy with the way the green pattern looks on your miniature, you don't need to add this. 
I like it to be a little bit darker. I also like to reinforce some of the areas where I want a little bit more of a dark green to kind of draw a little bit of contrast between the color, even though it's not really going to show up as much as with the brown because it's a darker color. I just like to reinforce some of those areas where I know there'd be shadows or a darker area, undersides of certain elements, areas that have a slope where you know that the light wouldn't catch as much. And of course, if there's some uneven patterns where I don't like the way the green laid down on the first layer, this really helps take care of a lot of that. So work to your liking. Once you're happy with the second layer, let it dry completely, and we'll move on to dry brushing. With all the contrast paint layers completely dry, it's time to start our highlight. I use Viejo Game Color Pale Yellow. The yellow will really accentuate the golden brown colors that we've got here, and it merges well with the greens. You'll want to take your time with this. We're just going to do a edge highlight dry brush, so if you wanted to edge highlight in a traditional manner, that would work fine. I've got a fairly decent sized dry brush here. I'm going to get some paint going, and I want to take a moment just to show you the amount of brush pressure I'm going to be using while I'm applying this to the miniature. It's not a color changing style of dry brushing. It is really just dragging very gently the bristles of the brush over those raised edges because that's really all we're trying to catch. Now you're gonna get some coloration on the flat surfaces here and there. It's gonna look a little bit worn and maybe dusty or, or weathered a little bit, which is fine, it's a good look. If that's not what you want to do, then again, go back to what I mentioned before about edge highlighting individually with a detail brush. But this is really easy to do. It does yield a nice overall weathered and worn look. You want to make sure to try to only start at the top and work downward. Don't You don't want to try to get a up and down type of brush stroke motion. If you need to angle the brush left and right to catch the sides of the edges, that's perfectly fine. If you do get some over coloration here or there that maybe doesn't quite work the way you want it to, that's all right as well. You can quickly try to wipe it away with your finger. You can use a dampened Q-tip. The dry brush paint doesn't adhere as immediately as you would think it would. Even though it's technically dry, it still it has to cure. So you do have some time to, to fix it. Or you can just be happy with the mistake or the overall look as it is. I also like to come back to the highest points, the areas that I know that are going to catch the most amount of light. Typically the top of the miniature, the tops of shoulders, arms, kneecap armor, things like that. Those are going to be the things that are going to have just the slightly lighter color as you would see the, the light catching it on its own. So if you start with those, and then do the entire miniature and then come back and hit those again, just those high raised edges, then you really set yourself up to have just a little bit more accentuation of the highlights on those details. And I think it really helps the overall look of the miniature. I also wanted to mention I did apply decals, a number panel and a uh, symbol on the leg. I prefer to do that before I do this dry brush step just so that it gets weathered along with the rest of the miniature. But that's just personal preference. Here's the finished dry brush step, and now that's the completion of the scheme. Anything else added here detail-wise is completely up to you. You can see here that I've detailed quite a bit. I've put the miniature on a base, I've darkened the gun barrels, I've jeweled and glossed the canopy with some blue, I've detailed the antennas with some black and then some white. I've also gone around and taken some black and charcoal into all the joints, the jump jet ports, I've also highlighted with a little bit of gray just to accentuate those edges. You can even do a little bit of a dry brush on that if you wish. I think it really helps tie the entire miniature together when you do these little steps. Again, one or two of these things will greatly improve the quality of your paint job, but if you decide to add all of these elements or none of them, that's fine. It's completely up to you. As you can see, the finished miniature I think really looks quite good for the amount of work that you have to put in. I think contrast paints can really pay off in certain ways, especially for folks wanting to paint lots of miniatures or just starting out. I hope you like the result. Please click subscribe, like us on Facebook, Camo Specs Online. Leave your questions or comments down below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Shutdown sequence initiated.